So thank you all for being here today. Uh, we really look forward to having you at SOIC and the ADIS program. Um, and so, oops, sorry, wrong. Sorry, okay. Um, so I, again, thank you for being here today. We really look forward to having you uh, here at SOIC and uh, in the ADIS, ADIS program. Um, I hope that this presentation will give you an idea of what to anticipate in the ADIS program, the types of courses you will take, and an idea of student projects and potential careers in data. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm originally from Chicago and New York, and I've been at SOIC for the last three years. I grew up loving science and technology and was the type of kid that played around with computers, built my own computers, and learned various programming languages on my own by teaching uh, myself. I also paid attention to new technologies as they became available and loved working with new technologies and methods uh, to help solve problems and find new ways to understand the world. I started working with data mostly from the scientific data perspective um, with thinking about how to manage very large data sets and the technologies needing, needed to manage those very large data sets. So I've worked in several uh, settings, including academia, scientific laboratories, and industry, and nearly always um, have worked in technology, in, in the technology and data areas. And what I really love about working with data is that it involves both the creative and an analytical side of, of work. So you have to be creative in order to work with data, but you also have to be analytical to work with data. So that's something I've really always enjoyed about it. And I'm the program director for the Applied Data and Information Science program. So again, I welcome you all and look forward to talking to all of you. So when we think about um, why data is important, um, in recent years, data has become incredibly important uh, due to the increase in the amount of data being generated um, by companies, organizations, and even by ourselves. Um, due to this increase in data, data-related careers are growing very quickly and they're in very high demand. Um, and so people working with data are, are needed in nearly every industry and every sector, including business, finance, trade, agriculture, healthcare, pretty much everyone needs someone who can work with data. So just to give you an understanding about the demand for uh, people who work with data and data scientists, um, the demand for, for data scientists is, is, very, is really quite high. So for example, uh, Glassdoor and LinkedIn have named data scientists as one of the most desirable and promising jobs in recent years. And additionally, um, data has, uh, the, the data has indicated that data scientists um, have a very high job satisfactory, satisfaction rate and have um, a high uh, career advancement scores. So along with just good salaries, uh, people with data skills seem to have a lot of opportunity for advancement and a lot of satisfaction in the work that they're doing. So when we, one of the reasons why data has become so important and data scientists have become so important and why there are so many promising jobs in data is due to the fact that data is simply being generated at this massive scale. And as you can see from the bottom graphic, you'll see that that data is just growing and growing and growing. And this projects out to 2015 or 2025, but you see it's just growing tremendously um, throughout throughout the world. And all of this generation um, is due to the fact that we have data coming in from a lot of different sources. So if you think about, we have data being generated from social media, from public um, and government sources, from business and transaction sources, and mobile and, um, and sensor data that's being generated. So all of this data needs to be organized, managed, and curated, and ultimately analyzed so that we can make decisions for it from it and you know understand what's what's happening in the world. So I thought that I'd uh, start by giving you a little bit of information about the Applied Data and Information Science program. Um, as this is a newer field and it's a newer program, um, I'd just like to start with giving you an overview of the program and also some specifics about the program. 
So the Applied Data and Information Science Program, or ADIS, incorporates skill sets from both data science and information science to prepare you for a data intensive career. You'll learn how to work with data at every stage of what is called the data pipeline. And to give you an idea of what we mean by data pipelines, um, data pipelines are a way to understand what happens to the data as it's being used and the skills that you need to work with data. So courses in the ADIS program were purposefully created to give you an opportunity to work with data at every stage and at every point in the data pipeline. Um, this includes merging, the merging of skills from the, both the information science perspective and the data science perspective. So the two pipelines that I have on this slide are examples. Um, the one on the left is from information science and the one on the right is from data science. And so in general, information science skills focus more on organization and management of data, while data science skills focus more on analysis and modeling of data. And for throughout your time at SOIC and the ADAS program, um, you will learn and gain skills from both perspectives. And that's something we were really specific about when we created classes, just to make sure that you get both skill sets. Now the ADIS program structure follows along with the data pipeline approaches. There's the major, which is the Bachelor of Science in Applied Data and Information Science, and that has two specializations. So you're able to choose um, from either the Applied Information Science specialization or the Applied Data Science, Science specialization, and we'll get a little bit more into those details later in the presentation. There are also two minors and certificates. Um, one is the Applied uh, Data Science Certificate and one is the Applied Information Science Certificate. Um, sometimes you'll hear the Applied Information Science Certificate or minor called Data Studies because that was the original name, but just to let you know, it's the same thing as Applied Information Science. Um, there are also two accelerated programs that you can consider um, if you'd like to complete your, a bachelor's and a master's in five years. And I'd highly suggest considering this because it would make you extremely marker, marketable once you get on the job market. So um, you can consider a um, BSMS in Applied Data Science or a BS and a master's in Library and Information Science. So definitely let us know if you have any questions about those because there's something to, to definitely consider for your future. So going back to the specializations, again, um, as ADAS students, you will choose um, the specialization that most suits your needs. Um, the Applied Information Science specialization focuses on skills related to information, the information science pipeline. So you will develop skills to organize, access, and manage data sets. You'll take classes in data curation, management, archives, and organization of data. Additionally, you'll also take classes that focus on the societal impacts of data um, and the responsibility and thinking about the responsibility of managing data, the managing data that we create in our society. Uh, the Applied Data Science specialization focuses a lot more on the data science uh, pipeline. So you will develop mathematics and technical skills to analyze data sets. You'll take classes in data analytics, cloud computing, and information infrastructure. Additionally, you'll learn um, to design algorithms and analyze data in order to provide insights from that data. So looking at um, some of the courses that you'll take for both specializations, um, these, are the, 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 these are the courses that you'd be taking for um, no matter what specialization you're in. So each of these classes builds onto each other and what you learn in one class will build into the next class. The first class that you'll take um, called Foundations of Data Studies is a survey course where you'll learn how to obtain, organize, manipulate, analyze, and visualize data. And so you'll get, your hand, you'll get a little bit of hands-on experience in pretty much all aspects of the data life cycle. And each of the remainder of the classes in the program will continue to build your skill sets 
in the other areas of the data pipeline. Some classes are more technical and hands-on, while others are more conceptual, conceptual. And as you need to understand certain concepts to be able to apply those concepts, but most classes have a mixture of hands-on and conceptual aspects to them. Now here are some selected classes that you will take depending on the specialization that you're in. So as you can see here, uh, for the Applied Information Science specialization, you will have some additional courses that consider the societal considerations for data, and additionally a data archives class to consider long-term data management. And for the Applied Data Science specialization, you'll have some additional courses in data analytics, as well as some uh, additional technical courses. Now, many students ask about the math requirements when it comes to the ADIS program. And so as seen here, um, both specializations require some math and statistics. And the students in the applied data science um, uh, specialization will take a few more math courses that will be particularly helpful um, for your classes in statistical learning and cloud computing. Um, but again, no matter what specialization in, you'll, you'll definitely take some math and statistics. And also a lot of students ask about the specific technology skills they will gain from the program. And as you can see here, uh, this program will provide you the opportunity for hands-on experience and a number of, um, of software and programs, including PHP, SQA, SQL, JSON, R, Python, and Tableau. Um, and you will use these programs to clean data, organize data, analyze data, and ultimately visualize data. So ADI, the ADIS program, um, it has some classes that are fully online, some classes that are on campus, and occasionally has some hybrid classes. And I know that um, this is something that, that students want to know about, um, you know, how many will be online, how many will be on campus. It's definitely a mixture. So you'll have some fully online, some fully on campus, some that are a mixture of both. And general expectations for classes um, that you wanna consider is especially with data science, um, this may be the first time you, you're learning about these topics or thinking about these topics in the classes that you're in. So please be prepared to learn and make sure you keep up with the readings and activities and turn in every assignment on time. The assignments usually build on each other. So it's really important that you, um, that you do every assignment. Um, ask questions and reach out for feedback. Um, that's extremely important. And also please to make sure um, to help each other. Um, as your classmates, um, you're all learning together. So if you start giving thoughtful feedback to each other, you can learn from each other. You can work with each other and learn how to collaborate together. You should remember that in college classes, you'll, you'll be expected, you should expect about three hours of a week outside of the class um, for coursework for every credit. So I would suggest have a good attitude, have fun, and work hard. Some tips for online classes. Um, online classes, it's extremely important to keep up with readings and activities and to really pay attention to any announcements or communication from your instructor. Um, make sure to use the discussion boards and emails and other ways to communicate um, with your classmates and your instructors. And it's also really important um, to give yourself enough time for activities and assignments. So um, make sure to take a look at the assignments um, before they're due. And if you have any questions, you know, reach out to your instructor right away so that you can make sure that you have all your questions answered before working on that assignment. Online classes can be really interactive and a lot of fun. Um, if you engage with the activities, you can help build a really a fun and active online community in your online classes. So for this next section, um, I'm gonna show you some examples of some projects that students have worked on in various classes, and also just a bit about my own research. Um, so for the ADIS program, we're really trying to give you an opportunity to use the skills you gain in each class. Um, 
So you, you want to think about um, how it's important to find a topic that you're interested in. Um, you can use data uh, to answer all sorts of questions. So when you pick a topic, um, you want to see if that data is available and think about the types of questions that you can ask of that data. So over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some examples of student projects. So one of my students was really interested in determining uh, where to find high quality data online. Um, there are a lot of data that's freely available through online websites. Um, some are higher quality than others. So the student decided to examine uh, 20 websites that have data freely available online and address some questions such as, is the interface user friendly? Are the data descriptions accurate? Um, is the data itself well organized? Is there a data dictionary available? And is the, da the data downloadable and understandable? So he created a summary of each of each of these websites and critiqued each of these websites. And here's just a snippet from his uh, final project where he uh, spoke about uh, the website uh, Kaggle that he fi finds incredibly helpful. Um, and he used a number of times, and other students of mine, of mine have used a number of times to find data sets um, that tie with their own interests. Um, and as he said here, that he would recommend this website to all students. Um, as a way to find data for their for their uh, classwork. I've had several students um, that I've worked with that were interested in exploring music um, and there's a data set of the uh, top 50 streaming songs on Spotify um, for 2019. So this the students explored if there were patterns um, that they could find between Spotify's most popular songs and items such as beats per minute, um, song length, and genre. Um, they did pull some additional da uh, data into their analysis so that they had uh, more, more information regarding length of song. Um, and they also did some manipulation to the data to really look at the genres that they were most interested in. So here's just some of the, uh, some of the visualizations that they provided in the final project. And as you can see here, uh, most, most of the beats per minute sort of range of the most popular songs have this particular range um, that they fall into, um, as well as song length, um, the sort of range that they fall into as, as the most popular songs. And the genre um, that was most popular was pop. So uh, it's just some, some visualizations from their final projects. Another student of mine was interested in examining how much of Indiana state budget was used towards education. Um, so this student uh, found some state budget data online. Um, they cleaned it up and removed any unnecessary items and analyzed the data and created visualization to address their questions. And this is just one visualization from their final project that shows a slight increase in education spending in 2010 but then the budget remains uh, fairly steady after that as far as education spending. And then another student of mine was interested in the type of food that is imported into the US and wanted to gain a better understanding of, uh, of trends in, in the food imports. So he found data uh, found data available on the website data.gov and was able to look at trends for imports as can be seen from this visualization, there seems to be a steady increase in vegetables and fruits um, regarding imports um, throughout the 2000s, but um, meats and dairy seem to remain fairly consistent and fairly low in compared to, comparatively to fruits and vegetables. And this is an earlier project um, that's done in one of the classes. Um, there are a lot of um, online portals and data tools that you can use that will help you understand and think about how to work with data. So one of my students was interested in looking at how income in impacts life expectancy. And so he found some data um, on the UN or yeah, the UN uh, website and use the Gapminder tool to examine world regions and countries and to look at how life expectancy um, and uh, income, how income impacts life expectancy. 
And as can be seen here, um, we have the different regions in green, which is uh, North and South America. Um, red is, uh, or yellow is the European countries, red is Asian countries, and then uh, the blue is uh, African countries. And lastly, um, the last project is from one of my students who was interested in examining uh, water usage in Indiana. So they examined uh, which country, which county in, Andean, in Indiana is using the most water, what industries are using the most water, and what are water quality considerations from Indiana. So he determined that energy industry and public supply use the most water in Indiana. And he was actually surprised because he was expecting farming and irrigation to use the most water, but it was actually energy that was using the most water. He also found um, some data that showed him that where, which counties had the most concerns with copper and lead um, when it came to water quality. And lastly, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some research that I've been working on. So um, I have a, a couple of projects I've been working on. The one that is that I work on the most is um, considering data science education because I I need to analyze the latest trends in data science education to ensure that the ADS program is kept up to date. Um, but some other work I've been working on is looking at um, data capture. Um, there are a lot of new newly available sensor technologies um, that examine that can be examined um, that capture data. So we're examining those new sensor technologies uh, to examine any data capture techniques that they're using and seeing how they're being used by industry, by, by uh, scientists, and uh, by other organizations. We're also looking at some very large facilities and analyzing the data life cycle of, of in very large scientific infrastructures. So seeing you know, how that, going back to the data, the data pipeline that we looked at earlier, if these very large facilities, um, if their data still goes through that sort of process, because they're so large, there's some differences and some unique uh, situations that they that they um, they have in their facilities. And lastly, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, careers. Um, so here at SOIC, we have excellent resources uh, for career services. Um, they'll help you search for jobs, assemble a portfolio, pursue internships, and connect with employers. And when you're done with this, um, with this degree, you can look for jobs such as data scientists, data analyst, data curator, data project manager, manager data specialist. Um, those are the types of careers that you would be qualified for. And we definitely have people here that will help you um, get to the types of, of jobs that you're interested in. And so that is, I just wanted to close out by saying thank you. And we're really excited to, that you've chosen the ADS program and SOIC, and to please uh, reach out to me if you have any questions or if you'd like to talk about the program further or if you need any assistance. And congratulations and welcome. So I think we have one question. Um, and we have a question from Angela, and it's how do I know what special specialization to choose, information science or data science? It's really dependent on your interest. And so I'm going to go back to that, that slide that really talks about the differences in the specializations. Um, so if you're interested in, if you want to think more, a little bit more about the societal impact of data, um, then information, the information science specialization is really uh, where you want to go. If you're wanting to dig deeper into analytics and um, more like designing algorithms, analyzing data, um, cloud computing, just a little more technical and mathematical than applied data science is what you would want to choose. You can also look at the differences in the selected uh, specialization courses. As you can see here, uh, the, the additional courses in applied information science, you have data and society, surveillance studies, and archives. 
Um, so archives is going to be more about the management and the long-term management of data. Data in society is going to be more about how data impacts society. And surveillance studies, again, it's still about how, how data is surveilled within our society. In comparison to the applied data science, is more about distributed systems, computing, statistical learning. It has more technical and statistical and analytical aspects to it. In either way, you learn to work with data. So, so we have another question. And this one is, how can I prepare for this degree while I am in high school? Oh, that's a great question. And I know that some students have the opportunity to take some of these math courses in high school. That's my understanding. Um, so that might be one way to prepare. Um, if you have the opportunity to take technology courses, mathematics courses, statistics courses, I'd highly suggest taking any of those courses. Um, if you have the opportunity, if there are any data related courses in high school, I would highly suggest um, taking those courses and also in just talking to us, um, getting to know a little bit about the program. Uh, taking a look at, for example, that website that my first student um, looked at, this uh, Kaggle website that has all these data sets available. Um, really thinking about how data, how we use data in, in our everyday life. Um, it's one way to, to really get you ready for, for this program. So we have another question. Yeah. And are there any data related student groups at IUPUI? Data related what? I'm sorry. Some student organizations. Oh. There are a lot of data related organizations specifically for students. Hmm, none that I can think of that are specifically for students, but there are data, there's data science organization, there's the data science community, um, data science.org. There's just, there's a lot of data science organizations available. Thank you. All right, any last minute questions? Last minute questions. All right, if not, thank you so much, Angela. And is there a way to contact you if anyone has any questions? Absolutely, so feel free to email me. Um, I'm going to go to the first slide. Oh, I thought I put my email on here, but I didn't. Um, let me put my email on here. So feel free to email me and I'm always happy to talk to students. So I'm at A-P-M-U-R-I-L-L -L at I-U dot E-D-U. Um, happy to talk to any student at any time. So feel free to email me, contact me, um, and we can talk more about the program. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.